Welcome to the Jungets Games tutorial for Winter Queen. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules of the game as we play through the game's first few rounds. Now, I would like to ask that if you end up enjoying this video, that you please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel and the creation of future videos just like this one, then please go to jungetsgames.com support. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and some of them come with nice bonuses, like voting on a few of the videos that I film each month. All right, let's now jump into the game. Out here, the game is fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I might make mistakes as I'm showing you the game, and if those, let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them. I would also like to briefly mention that the game does not come with these colored cubes. I am simply using these to differentiate between the players for this tutorial. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. Now, as you can see, we have a board in the middle of the table, and then in between each of the players, there is a crystal holder tile. Now, each of these are enchanted crystals that were created by the Winter Queen, and each of the players is a wizard who is tasked with using these enchanted crystals to cast a wide variety of spells. Now, the way we do this is we will send these crystals out to the board, and then from there, we will gain access to specific spell books. Once these books are in front of us, we can then send these crystals onto those spell books to then build up towards casting the spell. Now, on our turn, we can cast one or both spells from a book if it has one or two crystals on it, and then we will generate victory points based off the conditional specifics of the spells that we just cast. Now, each of these spells will give us points based off of specific conditions with the crystals out here on the main board. So we are trying to place crystals out here to get the right spell books, while also setting us up to get a decent amount of points from the spells that we are eventually going to cast. Now, points will come in the form of these gold coins, which the Winter Queen will give us when we cast spells, and we will also get one gold coin every time we remove the last of the enchanted crystals from one of the holders. Once that happens, we will then fill the crystal holder back up to its maximum, which varies with the player count. Now the game will continue until all of the crystals have been emptied from this bag, and once that happens, we will finish the round and play one more round, and after that trigger happens, there are a couple of differences to the rules which I will describe later on in the tutorial. After that, we will go into final scoring where we can cast all of our remaining spells, and then the player with the most gold coins will be the winner. Well, with all of that in mind, I think we can now start playing the game, and for today's tutorial, we are going to play as the red player. Now, as you can see, we have the Winter Queen token in front of us, and that means we are going to be the starting player, and this token will stay in front of us for the entire game. So, let's now go ahead and take the first turn of the game. Now, for our turn, we are going to take a single action from three different options. The first option lets us take a crystal that we have available to us, and we can place it out onto an empty spot on this board. The second option lets us take a crystal that is available to us, and we can put it down onto a spellbook that we have in front of us, but right now we obviously have no spellbooks, so that is not an option. The third thing that we can do is we can cast a spell that is in front of us that has a crystal on top of it, but once again, we don't have any spells just yet, so that means the only option that we have for the first turn of the game is placing a crystal out onto the main board. So let's now go ahead and choose a crystal to send out towards the map. Now, as you can see, these crystals are on these three different holders, and whenever we access the crystals, we can only go for the ones that are between us and our opponents in the clockwise and counterclockwise directions. That's why we have three of these in a three-player game, and we would have four in a four-player game. Also, if we were playing with people around the table, you would most likely place these around the outside of the map so that you always have one of these between you and one of your opponents. Now, I am showing that right down here, and that means we have access to this holder and this holder because they are between us and our opponents, and we will never have access to any of the crystals on this holder over there. So, these are our eight options, and I think we are going to start by placing this green crystal out onto the map. Next up, let's focus on the map, where as you can see, there are five different areas. There are these four different colored counties, and then there are five of these white locations, and all five of these individual locations are collectively called the Queen's Domain. Now, at the start of the game, we shuffled up eight of these tokens face down and put them randomly onto these spots and then flipped them up. And as you can see, some of the Queen's Domain tiles are empty, while others show crystals. Now, if it has a crystal, then that means there is effectively a crystal on that spot for the entire game. And if it's empty, then that means new crystals can be placed on top of it. Now, that's because whenever you place a crystal out onto the map, it has to go onto a spot that does not already have a crystal. And once again, each of these three spots have a permanent crystal on those locations. It's worth noting these tokens do not move at all throughout the game. Now, we have to consider where we want to put this down. And a big thing to keep in mind is which of these spellbooks that we want to take. 
Now you can see each of these spellbook stacks is associated with one of the colored counties. And if we want to take a specific spellbook, we have to place our crystal down into an empty spot within that county. So for instance, I think we want this spellbook over here. And in order to get it, we have to put this crystal down into an empty red spot, or we can place it down into any of the empty queen's domain spots. Whenever you go into an empty queen's domain area, you can choose from any of these different spellbooks because again, the queen's domain areas are not part of these counties. Now in this game, there are only two of those wild locations and I figure we may as well use this one up so our opponents can't gain access to it for now. And we do want this spellbook, so now we can take it. Once again, since we went to a queen's domain area, we could choose any of them, but if we went into the red area, we'd be forced to take the top one from the red stack. Next up, we can place the spellbook in front of us, and it's important to note that players can never have more than three spellbooks at any one time. Now that this is here, we can start preparing to cast one or two of these spells, and I'll talk about the details of that later on in the tutorial. At this point, it looks like our action is done, so our turn is over, and now play will move clockwise over to the green player. Since they don't have any spellbooks, they must place a crystal out onto the map, and they can choose from either of these two holders. In this case, they want to place this yellow crystal out. Next up, they've decided to place this into the purple county, and that means they can take the top spellbook from the purple stack, and they have indeed decided to do so. After that, their turn is done, so now the blue player can go. And once again, they have no spellbooks, so they must place a crystal onto the map. In this case, they want to place this green crystal, because of course, they can choose from either of these two holders. And they've decided to place this onto the other open Queen's Domain spot, which means they can take the top spellbook from any of these stacks, and they want this one over here. So they can put this in front of them, and that's finished their turn. This means it's time for us to go again, and remember, on our turn, we can either place an available crystal onto the map, or we can place an available crystal onto our spellbook, or we can cast a spell that is ready on our spellbook. Now, in order for a spell to be ready, it must have a crystal on top of it, so obviously we can't do the third option, but I think for this turn, let's go ahead and take a crystal and put it onto our spellbook. Once again, we can only choose from the holders between us and our opponents, and between these two, I think let's take this green crystal and then put it onto the right-hand side of our only spellbook. Next up, I'd like to talk a little bit more about spellbooks. As you can see, every one of them has a left page and a right page, and each of these are individual spells. Now, on our turn for our action, we can cast one or both of these spells as long as the spell has a single crystal on top of it. Now, the crystal that is activating that spell is going to actually change what we will score for that spell. For example, over here, this spell is called Magical Clouds. Now, as you can see, that says we will get one victory point for every single crystal and group of clustered crystals of the placed color. So that means when we cast this spell, we will get one point for every cluster of the green crystals that are out on the map. So we are hoping that there will be lots of those by the time we score. For example, we can look out at the map right now, and as you can see, there are currently two clusters of green crystals, because a single crystal not touching any others is still considered a cluster. Now if this was next to that one, this would be a single cluster of two crystals, and the magical clouds is going to score us one point no matter how big the cluster is, so we want to see lots of little clusters of green crystals, and obviously there are already two of those, so if we were to cast this right now, we would get two points, but I'm hoping it could be even more than that before we actually cast. Well, our current turn is done because the entire action involves just placing a crystal onto an empty spellbook page. This means it's time for the green player to go and they have decided to place a crystal out on the map. Now that is going to be this red one, and they've decided to place it right over here, and since that is in the green county, they can take the top spellbook on the green county stack. This will then go in front of them, and that has finished their turn. Now I'm not going to talk about the specifics of these spells just yet, but I will cover all eight of the different spells that come in the game before the tutorial is over. Well, with their turn done, the blue player can go, and they have decided to take this green crystal here and put it onto their right-hand spell page. When we focus over here, you can see this spell is called Border Keeper. Now that says when this is activated, they will get one victory point for crystals of the placed color, which in this case is green, that are around the edge of the map. So that means they want to see more green crystals around the borders. At the moment, there are two green crystals on the borders, so if they use this right now, that would give them two victory points. So that does seem like a pretty good start for that spell, but it's possible they'll wait around to try to make it bigger. Well, the blue player is done, which means we get to go again, and I think let's go ahead and prepare the other spell on our single book. 
Now we can choose from any of these four crystals, and unfortunately, no matter which one we take, that is going to leave just one crystal behind. And remember, if a player removes the final crystal, then they will get one victory point, which are these gold coins, and then that holder will be filled back up to its maximum. Now in this case, I think the yellow crystals are better than the red or the purple for this scoring condition, so let's take one of the yellow and place it right over there. Before we move on, let's take a look at the details of this spell, and as you can see, that's called Polar Star. Now this says when this is cast, we will get one victory point for every empty space that is adjacent to a crystal out on the map that has a color that matches the activating color. So in this case, that is going to be a yellow crystal out on the map. Currently, there are two yellow crystals out, and each of them has five empty spots around them. So that means we would get five points, which means that is a very powerful option for us. Now, of course, our opponents can see this, so it's possible that they will try to fill in some of the spots to make the scoring smaller on their turns, but of course, they are also trying to angle things to get as many points as they can for their own spells. Well, our turn is done, so that means the green player can go, and they have decided to take the final crystal from this holder, and it happens to be a yellow one. Now, they are going to use this in order to prepare this spell, which also happens to be a polar star. So we were feeling pretty good about potentially getting a bunch of points for this, and now the green player is also going to probably try to piggyback on top of that as well. Now, after that crystal is removed, we can see there are no more crystals on this holder, so that means the green player is going to get one coin as a reward from the bank, which is a victory point, and that can go face down in front of them. Next up, they have to randomly pull out a number of crystals equal to the maximum for the holder and put it on top. Now, in a three- or four-player game, you always put four of these crystals down, but in a two-player game, you only put three. It's also worth noting, in a two-player game, you still have three of these holders out, each of which having three crystals in a maximum. And in a two-player game, both players can take from any of the three holders. Green is done with their turn, so now the blue player can go, and they have decided to send this red crystal out to the map. Next up, they want to place the red crystal here, and the reason for that is because by putting it here, now each of these yellow crystals just has four empty spaces next to it, whereas before, they had five. They can tell both of their opponents have a polar star spell queued up for the yellow crystals, so by placing right here, they've lowered the amount of points that each of those polar star spells can get by one. Next up, if the blue player wants, they can take the top spell from the purple county stack, and they have decided to do that. So the spellbook will go right over there, and that's finished the blue player's turn, which means it's time for us to go. Now, at this point, we could cast these spells in front of us, or we could choose to place this purple crystal out onto the map, because that would give us one victory point. If we don't do this, it feels somewhat likely that the blue player will do it on their turn. It seems like maybe they are trying to queue this up to get those points. They certainly wanted us to have a tough decision here. Now, if we do place this crystal right now, we won't be casting a spell, and the longer we go not casting this polar star, the less points we are likely to get from it as those empty spots fill in. So I think we are not going to take the bait, and let's go ahead and cast spells on our turn. Now this is indeed the third action option that you can take, and when you cast spells, you can cast one or two from any one book that you have in front of you. Now in order for a spell to be cast, it must have a crystal on top of it, so as you can see, for our turn, we can cast both of the spells on this book right here, and we can cast them in any order of our choosing. Well, let's start by casting our Polar Star. As you can see, there is a yellow crystal on there, so that means we have to find a yellow crystal on the map, and we will then get one point for every empty space that is adjacent to it. Currently, there are two yellow crystals out here, and each of them has four empty spaces, so it doesn't matter which one we choose. Let's just say we go with this one, and now we will get four points for those four empty spaces. So we can take these four coins and put them face down in front of us, and now because we cast one spell on this book, we have to cast the other one. You are not allowed to just cast one and save the other one over here. You must go with both if they are both prepared with a crystal. So once again, this is Magical Clouds, and we have a green crystal on it, so that means we will get one point for each individual cluster of green crystals out on the map. Currently there are two of these, so that means we will get two points. Those can be added to the stack of our coins, and now it's time to remove the spellbook that we cast at least one spell from, and we also remove all of the prepared crystals on that book from the game. So in this case, all of this will be removed from the game, and now it's time to potentially remove a crystal from the map. Now the way this works is whenever you cast two spells on a spellbook, you can take any of these crystal tokens and put it back into this bag. However, if you only cast one spell on one of your spellbooks, well, you obviously only do the applicable spell and you do not remove any of these crystals from the map. 
In this case, we did cast both of the spells, so we can remove one of these. And it's worth noting, we can only remove one of the crystal tokens. We can never modify the crystals that are depicted on the Queen's Domain tiles. Well, we can tell the blue player is preparing to score the green crystals around the outside. So I figure let's go ahead and remove this green from the board, and we put it back into the bag. Well, our turn is done, so now the green player can go. And they have decided to take this red crystal, and they would like to prepare this spell over there. When we take a closer look, we can see this is the Bright Way spell. Now it says you get one victory point for crystals of different colors on a line drawn from the chosen crystal, which is going to match the color of the prepared red crystal here. That means they could potentially start with this red crystal right now and go in that direction. And there is just one other type of crystal color, so they would get one plus one or two points. If this was here and that was there, this would still stop at two because that would block any further scoring because that is not a new color. Likewise, if this was here, then that would be three points for them if they scored it like that. Obviously, that's not the case, so the best scoring they have right now would be two if they did activate that bright way on their next turn, although it's possible the map might be different by the time that happens. All right, green is done, which means the blue player can go, and we are not surprised to see them decide to remove this crystal from that holder. Now, they want to put this onto that spellbook, and then when we take a closer look, you can see that that spell is called Northern Lights. Now that says that when they cast this spell, they will get one victory point for the counties and the queen's domain area that has at least one crystal of the placed color. So effectively, there are five different zones on the map when you count the queen's domain, and for every one of those zones with at least one purple, the blue player will get one victory point. Unfortunately for them right now, there's just one purple out on the board, so if they cast this Northern Lights, they would just get one point. So it's possible they are going to wait on casting these spells until they're able to get more points for both of them later on in the game. Next up, we can see that they did empty the last crystal from this holder, so they are going to get one coin from the bank as a victory point, and then they can randomly pull out four more crystals from the bag to fill that holder up. With their turn done, we can go, and we don't currently have any spell books in front of us, so we have to place a crystal out onto the map. And I think let's go ahead and place this blue crystal out. With this, I think we should place right over here, because I want this spell here. Now, if we wanted to, we could place right over there in order to try and lower the polar star scoring for the green player with the yellow crystal they have on it, but I think I care a little bit more about getting this spell book. Now, as you can see, it has a Northern Lights spell, which we've already talked about, and it also has a Forest Wisps spell. Now, the way these work is you put a crystal on top of it, and then when you score, you will either find a crystal on the map that matches this color or the color of the crystal that you placed, and then you will score victory points for the amount of the other color that is adjacent. So that means if we put a blue here and then scored it right now, you could see we could target this blue, and then we will get one point for every adjacent red, which is the opposite color, so that would give us two points. Or we could target any of the reds and then get one point for each of the adjacent blues. In this case, that would be worth one point, which does seem worse. Now, there are a couple of these blue crystals available to us right now, so I think potentially building towards this is not a bad idea for us. So we can put the spell book in front of us, and that has finished our turn. This means it's time for the green player to go, and they have decided to cast both of these spells. They're going to start with the bright way, and as you can see, it has a red crystal on it, so they will start with a red crystal and then score one point for each different crystal they bump into in a line. When we look back out of the map, they are going to target this red crystal and go in that line, and as you can see, that means we actually made a mistake. We probably should have put this crystal over there because that would have been just as good for us. But now that it's over here, that is another crystal in a different color in that line. So we definitely have to pay attention not only to what we are hoping to do, but also to what our opponents can do. Because we just walked into giving the green player one more point than we should have. So in this case, they get one point for the starting red crystal and then one for the blue and one for the yellow because those are different colors. After that, there is a break in the line, so that is going to stop the scoring, so they will get three points for the bright way. They are also going to score the polar star for the yellow crystals, and as you can see, they will target this one because it has four empty spots, so that means they will get four points. That means, all told, they will get seven points total for both of these spells. Now, all of this will be removed, and since they cast two spells on their turn instead of one, they can also remove any of these crystals and put it back into the bag. First things first, they will take their seven points, and then they've decided to target us a little bit by removing this red crystal, which makes a potential red Forest Wisps spell activation worth less points than it was. 
This will then go back into the bag. And remember, we are going to keep playing until all of these crystals are removed from the bag. So by removing them from the map, we are not prolonging the game. We are just changing up the options for ourselves on the board and obviously trying to deny points from our opponents. Well, the green player's turn is done, so now the blue player can go, and they have decided to send this purple crystal out to the map. In this case, they want to place over there, and because that is in the green county, that means they can take the top tile from the green county spell stack. Now, they do indeed want to do this, and before we move on, I'd like to talk a little bit about these two spell options, because they are the last two that I have not talked about just yet. Now, this first one over here is a Rose of the Winds, and that says when you cast this spell, you get one victory point for crystals of the placed color in the six lines drawn from the chosen crystal, including itself. So that means potentially if there was a yellow crystal on this spot right here, they could target yellow, and they would go out in each of the six lines and get one point for each yellow, including itself. So that would be two points right now for the yellow. There is one other spell on here, and that one is called Arcane Knowledge. Now this says that you get one victory point for crystals of the placed color on your and one of your chosen opponent's spellbooks. Now this includes all of your own spellbooks and all of the spellbooks that your opponent has, so you can potentially score a significant amount of points if both you and one of your opponents is having a lot of a single color crystal on their spellbooks that they are preparing. Well, the blue player's turn is done, and they are at their maximum limit of three spellbooks, and now it's time for us to take our turn once again. Now before we actually take our turn, I do want to mention that the next thing I'm planning on teaching is what happens once the end game has been triggered, which is of course what happens once all of the crystals are taken out of this bag. Now before I get to that, I think I'm going to play through a few more rounds of the game, but if you'd like to skip ahead to see how the game ends, then go to the timestamp in the top corner. So we can take our turn, and if we wanted to, we could prepare one of the sides of our spellbook on this turn. And when we consider the fact that the blue player has already prepped a purple crystal on a northern light spell, I think let's maybe piggyback on the potential work they are wanting to do by preparing a purple crystal onto our own northern light spell. Now it's possible that we could work towards this, which would help them, or maybe we will both avoid this from now on, but either way, I think this is a pretty good option for us. So that has finished up our turn, which means the green player can go. And they have decided to place this blue crystal out onto the map. In this case, they want to put it into the purple county, and they're going to put it here, and then they are going to take this spellbook. Now, it's worth noting, there is just one spellbook left over here in the purple county, and once they are gone, no one else can take any new spellbooks from that specific area. Now, as you can see, this does have the Brightway spell on it, and right now there is a pretty nice Brightway going on the board with four different colors in a row, the max scoring would be five in a row, but still four in a row is pretty great, and it's likely the green player is hoping to score that one over here, unless, of course, this gets messed up by somebody removing a crystal from the map before that happens. So that's finished their turn, which means the blue player can go, and they have decided to take this red crystal from that holder, and they are going to prepare this border keeper spell. That seems pretty good, considering currently there are two red crystals on the outside. Obviously, scoring more than two is probably what you want to do, but two is still a good start. Now we can see the blue player finished off all of the crystals on this tile, so they can take one coin from the supply, and then they can take four more crystals out of the bag to refill that tile. With blue done, we can now take our turn, and I think I want to pick up another spellbook. With this in mind, I think let's send this blue crystal out to the map, and I think we should put it into this blue area here in order to pick up this spellbook. Now I suppose we could go over into that spot and take one of any of the spellbooks, and uh, perhaps that's better. If we do this, that makes it uh, not available to our opponents, which we certainly like. So yeah, we'll go there into the Queen's Domain, which means we can take any of the spellbooks, and we are going to take this one. In particular, this does have a Border Keeper spell on it, and if we are able to put a blue crystal down on this, then that would be worth three points at the moment, because there are three crystals next to the border. There's also three crystals that are blue that just showed up over here, and it's possible our opponents might put those out before we are able to swoop in and activate this with the blue, although we do, of course, have to have access to a blue, but that's a problem we can deal with later on. I suppose there is one blue currently over here which we have access to, but it's possible the green player might go for one of these instead to not set up a single crystal over here for us to get points. Now, either way, we are done with our turn, so the green player can go. And it looks like they do want to take a blue crystal that they are going to take from over here. With this, they are going to activate that bright way spell over there on their book. 
After that, their turn is done, so the blue player can go, and they are more than happy to place this red crystal out onto the map. As you can see, they have a border keeper spell already prepared with a red crystal, so if they put this on the border, they will get an extra point when this scores, and of course, they just cleared this holder, so that is going to give them an extra point when they refill it. Now, at the moment, the blue player does have three spell books, so no matter where they go, they cannot take another one. And for the moment, they've decided to place this over here into the blue area, and then of course they don't take a book. After that, they can take one point because they removed the final crystal, and then they can refill that with four more from the bag. As you can see, there are still quite a few more crystals left in the bag at this point. With their turn done, that means we can go, and I am very happy to see a blue crystal show up over here. I think we should use this immediately and put it over onto our border keeper, we want to score for the blues, and this way we don't have to leave a single crystal over here that the green player could take in order to give themselves another victory point. So that has finished up a quick good turn for us, and now green can go. And they have decided to cast a spell. Now in this case, the only one they can do is over here, which is the bright way, and since they have not prepared the other side, they are just going to cast one spell, and that means they won't be removing any crystals from the map and putting them back in the bag. In this case, it looks like they wanted to cash this out before one of their opponents potentially removed uh, crystals from that spot to make this score less. So in this case, they can score the bright way with a blue crystal to start, and they are definitely going to target this blue crystal here. Now they are going to go in that direction, so they get one, two, three, four points because those are all different colored crystals, and then they can remove these from the game. So they can take their four points and put that on their stack, and that finished their turn. Now it's time for the blue player to go, and they have decided to place this green crystal out onto the map. After considering their options, they're going to put it right over here, and they do not take another spellbook, because once again they are at three, they should probably get around to actually casting some of those spells they have in front of them. That's finished their turn, so now we can go, and when I consider that we are planning on casting this spell probably sooner rather than later, I think let's actually take this yellow crystal and put it over here onto our forest wisps spell. Now, if you remember, when you cast this one, you find a crystal that matches one of these two colors, and you get one point for every adjacent crystal to that one that is of the other crystal type. Currently, there is a purple crystal on the map that's next to two yellows, so by placing that there, that would be worth two victory points when we cast this, and perhaps we can make that even bigger before we cast this spell. Well, our turn is done, so now the green player can go, and they have decided to place this blue crystal out onto the map. Now when they consider their options, they do not want to put this around the border because they can tell we are going to be scoring for blue crystals on the border, and it appears they have decided to place this right over here. Now it's likely they did that because they have this Rose of the Winds scoring potential. If they put a blue crystal on here and activate this one, they get one point for that and every blue in all six of the directions, and in this case that would be worth four points. And of course by going over here, they have not put it around the edge. Now they have decided they would like to take the spell from the blue county as well, which is going to be this one here. Green is done with their turn, so blue can go, and they have decided to take this blue crystal, and they are going to prepare this Rose of the Winds spell. Now they can tell that there is a good scoring for the blue crystal out on the map already, and they want to jump on that. Currently this is worth four points, and it could be worth more by the time they cast it. That's finished their turn, which means we can go, and I think let's place this red crystal out on the map. It's a good time to take that opportunity because that is going to give us a point for clearing this holder. Now let's place it right over here, and the reason for that is because we can take this spellbook from that location, and I think there are a couple of good options for this magical cloud spell. Also, that puts this red crystal next to three blues, and we do have one forced wisps spell that has red on it, so if we are able to find a blue crystal and put it here, we could then score that for three victory points, which is still pretty good. For now, we can place this in front of us, and then we can take one point for clearing this off, and now we have to deal out four more crystals from the bag. After that, we are done, which means the green player can go, and they are tempted to take this yellow crystal, but instead they are going to take this blue one in order to prepare this Rose of the Winds spell. After that, it's time for the blue player to go, and they are going to cast this spell on that spellbook, that is Rose of the Winds with a blue crystal, which means they can target any one blue crystal and get one point for that, and every other blue crystal in all six of the directions. They are going to select this one, which is going to be worth one, two, three, four points to them total. 
they can place those on their victory point stack, and that has finished their turn. Now, at this point, it would be time for us to go, but I think I am now going to stop playing through the game, and now I'd like to discuss what happens once the end game is triggered. Now, once again, that happens once all of the crystals have been emptied out of this bag. Now, obviously, this is going to happen when someone is refilling one of the holders, and for this example, I've cleared out most of the gems from this bag. Now, as you can see in this example, there's just three gems left, so these would go over here, and now that there are no gems left, the end game has been triggered. Now what we do is we actually take all of the crystals from all of these holders and put them all onto a single holder. And for the rest of the game, everyone will have access to all of the crystals on this single holder. After that, we will keep taking turns until we get to the starting player and then play one more round. Once the end game has been triggered and we are in the final rounds, players are not allowed to cast any more of their spells. Instead, all they can do on their turn is remove a crystal from the center and put it onto the map or onto a spell that does not already have a crystal on it. Now, once we have fully completed all of the turns, the game will be over and it will be time for final scoring. In final scoring, we will go in player order and each person is going to cast every single spell that they have prepared on all of their spellbooks. So once again, you cannot cast spells on the last rounds of the game once it's triggered, but you are obviously going to prepare as many of your books as you can for final scoring. Now, when you do the final casting of these spells, they work just like normal, except you no longer remove any crystals from the board when you cast two spells from a book. And once you cast the spells during final scoring, you leave the books in front of you along with the crystals because your opponents might use the arcane knowledge spell to gain points from yours. Once each player has cast all of their available spells, the last thing that we have to do is reveal our coins and whoever has the most coins will be the winner. Well, at this point, I've covered just about all of the rules to the game, which means this tutorial has come to a close. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to play Winter Queen. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.